Hello, everyone. I'm Madden. I'm a student at UC Berkeley, and I'm uh, and I'm studying things like ChatGPT, and um, I'm here today to talk to you again about how to how to use ChatGPT and how to effectively use it uh, to help you with your writing, with your planning. So, good afternoon. This is our ChatGPT class. And so we're gonna delve deeper on how to effectively use the program uh, for your writing, your planning. Um, here's what we'll cover. We'll cover what is ChatGPT, how to create an account, uh, some tips for talking with ChatGPT, how to get it to respond to what you want to know, and some real life examples like managing recipes or planning a trip, creating, a, creating an itinerary. So let's get started. So just a quick, re quick recap, uh, what is ChatGPT? It's a, you know, it's a special AI program which has been trained to understand and respond to what we say or ask. And it can be, it, it, it's very helpful in answering questions or telling stories or giving advice. And it's, it's, an, and it's like an advanced chat bot, uh, like, similar to Alexa or Siri. So how does it work? So that's a good question. ChatGPT works by learning from the text it reads. So it's been trained before using text the company gives it, but it uses the text that you give it with a prompt like, uh, hey, ChatGPT, how many stars are there in the galaxy? And it'll, it'll take the information that it already knows and the information that you ask it and then to give a response. So we'll go into that more in a moment, but it's, it's about uh, creating a response. So here's some advice on how to create an account because I know we had some questions about that last time. So if, you want, if you're interested in creating an account to use ChatGPT for yourself, and I highly recommend you do, you first want to start here, which is the home screen for chat.openai.com. OpenAI is the company that makes ChatGPT. And I'll give you guys, I'll enter this into the chat. That's where you can log in or create an account. So go to that website to get started on creating a new account. Um, you can create an account on your mobile phone, but Honestly, it's probably easier doing it on the computer. But um, yeah, so you'll go, to, you wanna to go to this website and then you'll get to the screen. Welcome to ChatGPT, log in or sign up. And since you guys don't have an account yet, you'd wanna click sign up, click the sign up button. And then you'll want to enter in your email address here. Enter in your email address. This is just the example um, email address from WikiHow. Just enter in your email address and then press continue. There's other ways to do it, like your Google account or Microsoft account, but we'll, we'll do it through the way most people do it for now, which is the email address. So click continue. And then you want to start creating your account, which you'll have your email up there. And then you'll want to enter in a password with at least eight characters. So pretty easy, just an eight, eight character password, letters or numbers, and then click continue. And then you'll get an email. You'll get an email from the company, OpenAI, and it'll ask you to verify your email address. And all you do is open your email, open this email from OpenAI, and then click verify email address, the green button right here. So I'll repeat that, just open your email, click uh, the email from OpenAI, and then click verify email address. And then you'll be brought back to, to the OpenAI login screen. And then I'll ask you for your name, and your first name and your last name. So this is just an example, Neve Campbell. And then name, last name, and then press continue. And then they'll also want to ask your phone number because you need to verify your phone number. 
So enter in your phone number, 4861-82, and then click send code. And then you should get a code through text message. So once after you enter in your phone number, you'll get a, a, a text message. And then you'll be sent to the screen. And then you should type in the six digit code that you were sent by OpenAI through text message. So enter in the code that you were texted. And then you'll be led to the screen and enter it in. And then you should have your account. Uh, here's an example. I'll create an account. Let's do sign up. So I want to create an account. So I'll do Berkeley, my, my Berkeley email. I'll be show past uh, puzzle sometimes. Like... <sighs> Okay, and then, so they just texted me a code and boom, I just got it. Uh, you can't see it, but they just it says your open AI verification code is 489283. So I entered in the code they sent me and we have our, our account. We're online. All right. Does anyone have any questions on that process? You can do it through entering your email and creating a password or through your Google account or through your Microsoft account. Does anybody yep. have any questions on the process? Yeah, I had a question, please. Do you have to have a mobile phone? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, you need some way to answer through text. So if you don't have a phone yourself, maybe ask a friend who does, or you know, a relative or someone with a phone that you can have a ver so, so that you can verify you through phone number. Enter in their phone number, click send code, and then so enter in their phone number, at least at least have one person with a phone number and then press send code, then enter in the code that they get through text message. So yes, I don't, I think at least you or someone needs a mobile phone, but um, like I just created a new account right now for my Berkeley email. And I already have one for my personal email, but I use the same phone number uh, that I use for my personal email and for my, my new account. So you can use the same number for multiple accounts. You just need one phone number. So it's it shouldn't be too hard. Uh, but that was a really good question. Anybody else? All right, sounds good. So here's some tips on having good conversation, good conversations with ChatGPT. So you want to be clear. Make sure to speak clearly and use simple words. Uh, it, it, the program understands us better when, we're, when we use easy and straightforward language, and I'll show you guys in a bit. Ask clearly when you wanna ask ChatGPT something. Try to be clear about what you need. Give specific details or examples to help it understand what you're looking for. Don't be afraid to experiment. Uh, if it gives you something you're not looking for, you can always correct it and say, no, I'm looking for this instead. And it, it will understand and say, sorry, um, is this better? And then I'll, I'll give you something else. And remember that it's a machine. So it's a computer program and it might not always understand everything perfectly. Um, and if you don't get what you, if you don't get the response you want, just keep asking, uh, make sure to change it up and uh, be specific. All right, now let's see some real life examples on how ChatGPT can be pretty helpful. So let's say uh, I'm cooking dinner, but I don't know what I wanna make. I'm really hungry though. Hmm. What are some good ideas to make for dinner? 
and I'll, I'll make it larger so everyone can see. So what are some good ideas to make for dinner? Because I'm, I'm kind of hungry, but I'm not feeling very inspirational. So let's see. Coming up with dinner ideas can sometimes be challenging, but there are countless delicious. So it's just giving me a whole list of ideas from curry, pizza, pasta, spinach, uh, eggplant, Parmesan. Wow. Okay, so these are a lot of ideas, some great ideas like grilled chicken, Caesar salad, pretty straightforward. But there are some stuff like stuffed bell peppers. That sounds good. Like it's like a vegetable stuffed with meat. And I'm interested in that, but I'm not sure all the ingredients or how to make it. So let's be specific. So stuffed bell peppers sounds really good. Um, what's the recipe? And it's generating a recipe for us. Ingredients, uh, instructions, Wow. So yeah, it's <laughs> and a little commentary. It's delicious and customizable. For large bell peppers, um, chicken, cooked rice, diced tomatoes, onions, a lot of ingredients. Uh, wow. And a lot of very specific instructions on the skillet, on the cooking, on, on the ticing. But let's say I noticed, oh, zucchini, onions, mushrooms garlic, I don't have any of these ingredients. Uh, I don't have, but but it can, one of the special things about ChatGPT is that it remembers what you say, what you ask it, and it can modify its responses to improve them or adjust them to meet your needs. So let's say I don't have any onions or zucchinis or mushrooms. Can you change the recipe? Can you adjust the recipe? So let's try that. Of course, if you don't have onions, zucchinis, or mushrooms, don't worry. You can still make a tasty version. So it just gave me the recipe and then it adjusted it. I think it it just removed the um, it, it removed the three ingredients I didn't have: the onions, zucchinis, and mushrooms, and replaced it with some diced vegetables diced vegetables of your choice. And I think most of the instructions are the same, but see, and it says, enjoy your adjusted version of stuffed bell peppers. So this ChatGPT is like a recipe maker. You can ask it on how to make things like, um, see, we were building on what we, the idea gave us and adjusting that. We can just change it up too. Like, how do I make, uh, bacon and macaroni and cheese. I don't know. Some, something silly like that. How do I make back bacon and macaroni and cheese? And they'll just give me that within seconds. they will create a recipe on bacon and mac and cheese. And I didn't think you need uh, flour for it, but I guess you do. And garlic and onion. Sounds really good. All right, and so these are some examples on how you can use it for making dinner, or cooking in general. So it's really great if you're feeling stumped and you just want some inspiration. Uh, a lot of teachers say that you shouldn't use ChatGPT to do your homework or write an essay, but you can use it to get some ideas, some inspiration on what to write about, on what to create for you, some ideas for things you can do. So I think ChatGPT is really amazing for inspiration, but also maybe a little bit for research. Like for example, let's create a new chat. So this one is for dinner ideas. See, it gave it a name, but what if we want to, let's say we're taking a trip to New York City, but you know, we bought the plane tickets, but we don't, know where to go you know we know the Statue of Liberty maybe the Empire State Building but like other than that like where else should you visit in New York City what are some hidden gems 
So let's ask ChatGPT. I'm taking a trip to New York City this later this summer. What are some fun places to go? Times Square, Central Park, Statue of Liberty and Ellis Island, Empire State Building, some great famous ones. Museums, ooh, Metropolitan Museum of Art, Museum of Modern Art, wow, a lot of museums. 9-11 Memorial, High Line, Chelsea Market, Broadway, Rockefeller Center, Coney Island, the Bronx Zoo, the Vessel and the Shed of Hudson Yards. Wow, so these are a lot of great examples. Some of them, a lot of people know, some of them a lot of people don't know. But let's say like, I've already been to Ellis Island. I've already been to Times Square. Like, what are some hidden gems? So what are some hidden gems to check out in New York City? Hidden gems, the cloisters. I've never heard of that before. But apparently it is a, like the branch of the Metropolitan Museum, Metropolitan Museum of Art, Roosevelt Island, Governor's Island, I don't know. Elevated Acre, the Frick Collection, a lot of museums, a lot of like green spaces too. Greenwood Cemetery, I don't know about that one, but um, wow, lots of museums. But I don't, I'm not a huge fan of museums. So let's, let's adjust that. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of museums. Any other suggestions? Oops. Steal out our mules, food tours, Chelsea Market, comedy clubs. That's a good one. I've always wanted to go to one. The Brooklyn Flea Market, Highline Park, jazz clubs. And so these are a lot of great examples. And but let's get let's get a little more specific. What uh, jazz clubs are good in New York City? Or let's say iconic. Iconic. Blue Note, Village Vanguard. I've never heard of these before. I'm sure they're great places. Wow. Dizzy's Club Coca-Cola. Wow. Okay. So let's, pa let's pause it from there. But see, this is a great example of how ChatGPT can help you plan your trip. You know, you can ask it some great places to go and then maybe cut some off. Like we don't want museums, but we like jazz clubs. So you can plan your trip and, you know, get a bunch of broad examples and then narrow it down. Thanks, ChatGPT. All right, let's go back for a moment. So let's talk about something else. So I remember some, some of you had some questions last time on data privacy, on ethics secure. Am I like selling away all my data for this? Is it, is it worse than Facebook? Um, and that, those are both good questions. So let's address them. So ChatGPT gathers information from like when you sign up for an account, they'll take your name, they'll take your like your IP address, like it'll know like, oh, this computer, like Madden is signing in from this computer in Campbell, California, or uh, Julie is signing in from this computer in Redwood City, San Mateo County. And so I'll know that. And it'll also know some information you type into the chatbot itself. Like, it'll know you ask like, oh, you're taking a trip to New York City, but it's not, I think the hope that they're kind of vague on their data privacy policy, but the hope is that they don't immediately sell that to people like, like and, we'll, and you'll start getting ads for like trip planning and whatnot. That's the hope. They do say that they only hold data for 30 days, 30 days, and then they get rid of it. That's it. And they say they don't train their bots, the chat bot, using what you enter it in. They don't do that anymore, allegedly. Let's hope that's true. Um, but just as a precaution, don't enter in private information. Like, don't say, like, this is my address. 
how long does it take to get to San Francisco? Like, that's a very bad idea. Uh, don't give it private information. I think it's not going to immediately sell that, but you don't want to take the risk of it having that and storing it for some purpose. It does share the data with vendors or service providers and um, legal entities like, I don't know, if there's some criminal investigation or whatnot. Um, but for the most part, I would say the conversations are pretty private. There's, there's not someone on the other side who's responding or like combing through these. It's mostly just you and the bot. Uh, I, I hope I answered your questions on data privacy, on some real life uses, such as recipe planning or trip planning, uh, and how to use it, how to sign up. Does anybody have any other questions? All right. Thank you everyone for listening to my presentation. Um, well, you can Madden, always contact. <clears throat> Madden, excuse me, this is Julie. Oh yes, yes. I'm Julie. just curious, how many people do you feel already on this chat bot uh, scenario? Because we are just hearing it, a lot of seniors are, but, and, but we're hearing AI and all these things on TV, you know, et cetera, and concerns about it. But how many people do you think are already into this? Millions and millions and millions, the whole world. <laughs> Definitely not the whole world, but I think a lot of people, especially students, are using it. Like we're we're using it more, maybe a little bit for recipe or trip planning, but mostly for like school work. Like, give me an idea what to write about for my essay. Or sometimes some students like they'll say like write an essay for me, and they'll get caught and I'll get in trouble, but. You know, if students are being lazy, they'll use ChatGPT to do their homework. It's not good, but it's what happens. Okay, so I guess the question would be, if you yourself asked them to write a story about something for your class, okay, that you were taking, and then Janie, two doors down from you, is doing the same question, is the chat box going to answer back the same answer? That way, you definitely would get caught, but is it usually the <laughs> same way? <laughs> That's a good one. I think ChatGPT... A lot of teachers have gotten good at recognizing what it looks like, because if you, ChatGPT is really good at giving you chunks of information, but it's not as good as making it sound natural. Like, it'll make it sound like you're reading Wikipedia or a book. It doesn't exactly sound like you're having a conversation with someone a lot of times, and that's where teachers catch students. That's where they catch them and say, hey, this doesn't look like you wrote it. It looks like, you know, the it looks like a chatbot wrote it, which makes sense. And for your question on two people like asking the same thing, like they're both asking, like, hey, help me write a story about, I don't know, a magical tree. If they both if they both ask that same question, no, they will not get the same response. Okay. They could get something similar because, like, say there's there's already a famous story about a famous tree. And so ChatGPT creates an original story, but bases it off of that one that's read before, like uh, Jack and the Beanstalk. And so it'll base it off that story. So the story will be very similar for both of them, but it's never exactly the same because every time ChatGPT makes a response, it's not pulling out something it's already wrote, it creates something new. So it's, it'll always create something new, but it can create, similar responses so that's my point it's it, it can be similar but it'll, it is unique thank you hey julie thank on you julie question on the chat gpt there's over a um, 100 million users right now wow yeah, yeah i was just wondering and, and then the probably... website generated 1.6 billion visits since june 2023 that's a lot wow wow yeah since june alone <laughs> right i know that's crazy that's big it's really big. So Julie, have you started an account since last? No, time? but I'm going to. I'm going to, and then I'm going to spread the word to my friends and family. <laughs> so Madden, hey, Madden, can they email you if they have any questions? Of course, my emails. My emails right here, madenhochoi at berkeley .edu. Hey. hey, Julie, can you write a, a, a an article 
for the Sentinel? Well, I might not be able to. But oh, the, Chat GPT might. Yeah, Chat GPT. <laughs> Chat GPT. Give me an A plus plus a bonus based on that. <laughs> well, 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 we won't grade you, but maybe it would be a sample of what people could see what it's about. I might need either Madden's help on that topic wise or anything, or I might even need Tina to help coax me to do this. But yeah, maybe. Julie, maybe. that might be a good idea. And then you can write, uh, wrote it with the help of ChatGPT, right? Because you always. I'm not giving any. I'm not giving any of that credit away. I won't get my A plus then. Ah! <laughs> I'll give you an A plus. <laughs> I'm not going to check for plagiarism. <laughs> <laughs> well yeah let me know if you need any help julie feel free to email me or ask me right now enter in the chat um Thank you. does anybody else have any other questions any anything else they're curious about when does school start for you when does school start for me it starts uh my move-in day is august 15th so in like three weeks or so so pretty soon nice empty nest time <laughs> Tina, mm -hmm. empty nest time. <laughs> <laughs> no, I still have one more younger one. So, <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, there was a question on chat about can you use languages other than English? So, we wrote ChatGPT support English, Spanish, French, German, Portuguese, Italian, Dutch, Russian, Ar Arabic, and Chinese. Oh, okay. Now we know how much of the world is on. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Madden, for the second session. Thank you, Madden. Very, very yeah, good Yeah, thank you, everyone, for having me. I, I, had, I had a fun time making this. and uh, this Playing around with ChatGPT is always fun. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank, thank you. you for coming.